There is so much extra biblical evidence that Jesus really lived, died, and rose from the dead. It's incredible. There's absolutely nothing extraordinary about the notion that there was an itinerant Jewish rabbi. There's something incredibly extraordinary about someone rising from the dead. Truth is only that which can be scientifically verified is not scientifically provable. Christ appeared risen from the dead to over 500 people. Where are their stories? And you can go out and talk to these people. Why would you ever think that the existence of a person and the resurrection of a person could be established merely on someone's word? If someone makes a statement, truth is only that which can be scientifically verified, they're committing intellectual suicide. They're self-contradictory. Because the statement, truth is only that which can be scientifically verified, is not scientifically provable. Instead, I didn't it's say that. It is a false. I, 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 did, I, I didn't say that or anything even remotely like it. Um, there are some things I, I fully acknowledge. You don't have access to what's going on in my mind or anybody else's mind, and so it may in fact be true um, that I'm thinking of a white elephant, and you have no way of knowing that. Um, so that's a particular category of a truth. Are you suggesting that the resurrection of Jesus, instead of being an actual event in space-time for which there would and could be physical evidence, is roughly equivalent to a thought? In my opening comments, Matt, I stated very clearly that there are different forms of evidence, different forms of knowledge, mm -hmm. scientific, historical, mathematical, yeah. logical, personal, relational. I referred to your love for your wife and her love for you. You cannot prove she loves you. She cannot prove that you love her. Mm -hmm. And yet you know that the overwhelming evidence is that she really does love you. And I think you know the evidence is that you love her. That is certainly true between my wife and me. I, I don't see how that's an answer to the question. Scientific he statement. It has nothing to do with science. It has to do with the trustworthiness of an individual based on evidence of trustworthiness. Is the resurrection of an individual more in the category of a physical event that could and should have empirical evidence, or more in the category of someone loves someone. I cannot empirically prove to you that George Washington was the first president of the United States. I have to historically prove that to you. Similarly, I cannot prove to you scientifically that Jesus rose from the dead. That's an historical question. So the question then becomes for me as a thinking human being, what is the historical evidence? Not what's the scientific evidence. Sure. What's the philosophical evidence. What is the historical evidence that the dead Christ rose from the dead? That is the question, Matt. So, um, well, no, the question is, is there sufficient reason to believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Um, there's we can present, there, there is empirical evidence of George Washington. And yes, it is historic as well. Empirical evidence. Did you ever see him, smell him, taste him, touch him? Do you think empirical evidence requires a person now to see, smell, taste, or touch a thing? Yes. Empiricism is an emphasis on sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. Yeah. See, what you, the problem is what you're doing there is you would, if that were the model, um, eliminate everything everywhere because everything takes place in the past. You don't have any present. You All you would have is your exactly. own... All you would have is your own direct experience. And then as soon as you try to corroborate it with somebody else, you're now getting secondhand information and all of it is in the past. There's a difference between saying something happened in the past and, and we have um, claims and reports and physical evidence. See, when you talk about something like George Washington, it is within the time frame not of our, my direct experience or yours or anybody else's, but to where we have a robust chain of evidence from a number of different competing sources to say that these things happened. None of them are extraordinary. None of them are supernatural. None of them are outlandish. And this is how we can have a good understanding that while George Washington was the first president of the United States, he probably did tell a lie and the cherry tree story probably didn't happen. There is so much extra biblical evidence that Jesus really lived, died, and rose from the dead. It's incredible. The early church fathers, Clement, Bishop of Rome, Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, Justin Martyr, the first apologist, Papia. None of those are contemporaries. 
They all knew the contemporaries. They talked with the contemporaries. They did not know the contemporaries. Absolutely, they did. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, and Clement, Bishop of Rome, knew the contemporaries of Christ. Phlegon knew some of those people as well. So did Thallus. So did Celsus. So did Tacitus, Suetonius, Pliny the Younger. These were Roman historians who did not believe in Christ, but who at least had the intellectual honesty to say, yes, the historical evidence is that Jesus really lived and supposedly rose from the dead. Mark, I, I don't believe that's what they said. I believe that I believe they're letter, reporting that people believed it. Three A.D. They, I believe they're reporting Mark, that people believed Mark, that. Mark, they're not seventy-three okay. A.D. In which he talks about Jesus Christ as an historical person. He was a Syrian philosopher. So I'm sorry, Matt. The evidence is Jesus was a real historical person. Now I find it interesting that you agree with me and say yes, he was a real historical person. He just didn't rise from the dead. Well, why would you do that, Matt? Because the only way you know that Jesus because there's absolutely historical. nothing extraordinary. So because are and, you going to let me answer the question? Because there's absolutely nothing extraordinary about the notion that there was an itinerant Jewish rabbi or a collection of them or stories about a person. There's something incredibly extraordinary about someone rising from the dead. Those two claims are not remotely in the same category and are not remotely establishable by the same sort of evidence. And certainly not second or third hand evidence hearsay decades later just because they may have known someone who knew someone. Thank you so much for your honesty, Matt. So I'm always you, honest. Why, honest. Why, why do you act like you're surprised? Of business has nothing to do with history. It has where, with where, history. where, where have I ever been the dishonest? Supernatural does not exist. Therefore, I can accept Jesus historically, but I cannot accept his resurrection. No, sir. No, sir. Now who's not being dishonest? Not only did I not say, not only have I never said, not only have I never said that the supernatural. Hold on. I think what we might have. If you're just going to lie about this and get on me about being honest, am I going to get to talk or what? You get to talk whenever you want to. There might have. I think there. Hold on. I'm going to do it right now. What happens sometimes is sometimes when the connection is not great, which I think. Tonight, I that, think uh, that Cliff, may be. not to pick on you, but sometimes when the connection's not great, it'll be delayed a little bit. So I think that's maybe what's happening. So I do just want to be sure that we get to hear from each of you. And uh, Matt, you've got the floor. Go uh, ahead. Never have I said the supernatural does not exist, not in this debate nor anywhere else. And it's dishonest of you to suggest that I have. What I have pointed out, as I have tonight, is that we I don't know of any way to confirm the supernatural. I'm not saying Jesus did not rise from the dead. I'm not saying I know Jesus did not rise from the dead because the supernatural is real. I'm saying you cannot demonstrate, as far as I can tell, that Jesus rose from the dead. And the claim that someone rose from the dead, whether it was by supernatural means or natural means, means is far more extraordinary than that there was any a, an itinerant Jewish rabbi. The, those two claims do cannot be established on the same standards of evidence. Why would you ever think that the existence of a person and the resurrection of a person could be established merely on someone's word? Keep going. That was a question. Do you have any more? I have lots of them. Are you going to answer that one? Sure. When I study history, I can't have different ways of determining what is historical or not. I've got to be consistent. Otherwise, I'm not intellectually consistent. So I have to have tests that I use to determine whether a document is historically reliable or not. And the Quran is very reliable historically. The New Testament is very reliable historically. So I read them as history and I take them seriously, both the Quran and the New Testament. And based on the fact that the New Testament has tremendous internal consistency, is archaeologically verifiable, is supported by an amazing number of Greek manuscripts, I am convinced that the New Testament is historically reliable, but so is the Quran. The Quran's historically reliable. There really was a dude named Muhammad who lived from about 570 to 632. And historically, that's a fact. Did he ascend to heaven and was the moon split in two? I don't have the faintest idea. I don't think so. A and yet, and yet, you're talking about how the Quran is historically accurate and the Bible is historically accurate. And because you think that the Bible is historically accurate, that's good enough to justify a resurrection. But when it comes to the Quran, you don't seem to know whether or not it's enough to, to justify the moon splitting to two or Muhammad ascending to heaven. Why is that? Because there are so many internal contradictions in the Quran that I cannot accept it as totally reliable. 
when I read the Gospels, there's a tremendous internal consistency, internal harmony that is mind-boggling. What about it? What so about consistency with the facts of Jesus reality? Jesus Christ really did die on a cross. He was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. His disciples dispersed in disillusionment. They were totally blown out of the water by his death. They were not expecting to see him again. But three days later, he first appears to some grief-torn women. And then over a period of 40 days, he appears to over 500 people who see him at different times, in different places, risen from the dead. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 that Christ appeared risen from the dead to over 500 people. Where, not, where are their stories? It's where are their stories? Clear. And you can go out and talk to these people, Paul is saying. Some of them are dead, but some of them are alive. I can't, I can't talk to them, and we have no records of anyone ever talking to them or any of them ever getting a story from them. If God has this an incredibly important message for humanity and comes down and presents himself in human form and sacrifices himself to himself and wants to preserve this narrative, why didn't God make sure that the Bible includes uh, eyewitness accounts from those individuals? We do have eyewitness accounts. Matthew was an eyewitness.